Well, good day there. This is Joe Van Cleve. And today's video, I'm going to talk about what is the bare minimum amount of equipment you need to make 4x5 direct positive prints. Stay tuned. I'd like to get you guys set up to be able to process Harman direct positive paper without needing a dark room at all. And first of all, you're going to need some Harman direct positive paper and it comes in the 4x5 sheet film size, meaning that the size of the paper, which is 9.96 by 12.5 centimeters, is exactly fit for 4x5 sheet film holders. So you we're going to have to get some 4x5 sized Harman Direct Positive paper. It's available uh, many places uh, by mail order on the computer, on the internet. Uh, for instance, in the United States, Freestyle Photo, B&H Photo are two of the big places I know of. And you're going to need some 4x5 sheet film holders. Now, you don't have to spend money on new ones. You can find used ones on eBay and other areas. And, you know, I've, I've seen them as cheap as $25 or $30 a piece. Each film holder is going to be able to shoot two prints or be able to hold two prints at once. So to start off with, you really only need one sheet film holder. Now, you're going to need, obviously, a 4x5 camera. Well, Joe, isn't that expensive? Aren't these really expensive? Well, 4x5 cameras are expensive but you have some options number one is you can buy an old used press camera a speed graphic kind of a camera you know these are available for several hundred dollars with a with a lens um, then the, the other thing is you can build a box camera that is uh, that takes four by five sheet film holders and is uses a pinhole lens these are very easy to use in fact if you're going to go to the trouble of building a pinhole camera in order to save money you don't actually need to use sheet film holders if you're willing to change out the paper after every shot in the box using a changing bag that reduces your cost by quite a bit so you can make a simple cardboard box pinhole camera that uses 4 by 5 paper <clears throat> you load it one at a time in a changing bag this is the probably the least expensive way to go to get 4 by 5 silver gelatin pictures the other uh, way to do it, then, if you get a little more fancy, is to make your own box camera that takes a glass lens and uses some kind of either a sliding box, one inside the other, or uses a bellows. And, it, and these are a little more intricate and involved and require you to have a little bit more camera building skills. So besides uh, having uh, possibly sheet film holders, but certainly having to buy the Harman Direct Positive paper, as I mentioned, um, you're going to need a changing bag. Now this is a large size flat changing bag, and I bought it from uh, Freestyle Photo, and these are available for under $30. But there's also a changing tent, and the changing tent kind of unfolds into a miniature fabric tent box with two arm sleeves and there they have a lot more room and they have uh, I think they're available for about ninety dollars roughly at places like Freestyle Photo or B&H Photo but a changing bag is essential if you don't have a dark room because this bag becomes your dark room and um, now there are several ways to use the changing bag to develop your pictures. Um, you, first of all, you can use the changing bag with sheet film holders to load and unload your, your holders, or if you're using a simple cardboard box camera, you use the bag to load the paper from the Harman package into the box camera and from the box camera into however you're going to be developing the paper. Now let's talk about how do we process the paper. So you've exposed your 4x5 print in whatever kind of camera you're using, whether it's a, it's a press camera, a view camera, a homemade box camera of, of whatever kind, and you want to process it, you're using your changing bag. Um, how are you going to process it? Well, if you get a standard 35 millimeter um, uh, developing tank for two reels, let's say, you'll find that it's not tall enough to put 4x5 paper in it. So you can't really use one of those. But if you go with, uh, for instance, Patterson is the current brand of uh, developing tanks that's readily available in the United States at places like B&H Photo and Freestyle Photo. Patterson makes a three-reel tank. 
and it holds either three 35 millimeter reels or two 120 reels and it's tall enough to be able to put a 4x5 print into it and wrap the print around the inside of the tank. If you do that, you don't actually need to buy the 4x5 film insert that goes with the tank. You simply buy the tank and you load the prints facing inwards on along the inside periphery of the tank uh, in the changing bag. And then you can rotary process the prints using a very small amount of chemistry. Now, Jobo is another brand that they're more expensive. They're made uh, in Germany. This is a test print or test drum tank. It's model 2820. These aren't made anymore, but this holds two 4x5 uh, prints uh, around the periphery of the tank. And the way it works is there are notches. There's a series of a big notch here and smaller ones, and it basically holds the paper here and here, and the stiffness of the paper holds itself in the t along the periphery of the tank. And then you put, I put about 100 milliliters of liquid, but actually the tank says it only needs 40 milliliters, but a very small amount of liquid like here, and then you rotate it either by hand or with a rotary processing base, and uh, you can either buy a manual processing base or you can uh, make your own processing base with a set of caster wheels and a little base of plywood like I've done. But basically, uh, you can uh, manually process it in, in a tank like this. Now, as I said, the Jobo uh, test print tank, the 2820, is no longer being made, but I think there's a 2520 tank that Jobo sells and for 4x5. And you can again put the paper along the inside per, uh, edge of the inside walls of the tank for processing. Now there's another way, a cr more creative way or unusual way to process prints, uh, 4x5 prints, in, 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 a, in a changing bag. <laughs> and this is kind of strange, but so you have uh, available at a lot of uh, stores in the United States, and I'm assuming in other countries, these little plastic three drawer storage cabinets. These are kind of designed to put on your desk and they have three plastic little drawers that pull out. And you've seen me in other videos demonstrate how these are used, how, how they can be used for developer, right? and stop bath in the middle tray and fixer on the bottom tray. And it has a footprint of maybe seven by seven or eight inches square. Um, so they're pretty small. Um, even in a, a changing bag like this, uh, you could actually use one of these. The thing you have to be careful of is you're gonna load the, the tray system into the, the, the changing bag on a table and then you're gonna to have to pour the chemistry into each tray carefully. And the thing is you don't wanna spill the chemistry out of the drawers and get them on the fabric of the changing bag because that's gonna be a big mess and might eventually ruin the fabric. Um, so you might wanna consider a large shallow tray uh, that you can set the drawers in that will fit inside the changing bag and it allow, it's sort of a drip system or ca that catches any drips and doesn't damage the bag. Um, I would suggest if you're going to go this route, first of all, the tray system or the drawers is under $10. Now, I've seen these for 5 or $6 at places like Walmart in the United States. Um, but I would recommend instead of the flat style changing bag, if you're going to do this, I'd recommend using the changing tent. Right, it's about ninety dollars uh, from places like B&H Photo or Freestyle Photo, but this enables you to actually put the three drawer file system into the changing tent in it with a shallow tray on the bottom just to catch any drips. And then you can bring your sheet film holder right into the bag, uh, zip up the bag, put your arms in, and then you can unload the uh, film or the paper, the Harman paper from your film holders and directly process them in the trays in your changing bag. And what you have is essentially a portable darkroom. Uh, of course, you could also just use a changing bag with a developing tank and change out the paper from the film holder or the camera directly into a bottle and then do the processing in your kitchen. So if you're going to use a um, changing bag with a set of three drawer uh, storage uh, 
trays. I would advise getting as large of a bag as you possibly can. Um, this one I got from Freestyle Photo a few years ago, and it's probably not quite as big as you'd want, ideally. But uh, you can see with the, tr with the drawers in here, in the bag, and of course it's unzipped so you can see it. You see you do have room to slide open the drawers, but the challenge is um, when you move the paper from one drawer to the other, it's going to be very easy to touch the paper to the fabric. And you'll, you might get lint or something on the print and then you're going to get chemicals transferred to the fabric. So the challenge is trying to keep your arms lifted up in a way so you have more of a, a changing tent kind of a situation. Now it is possible to put little struts or little sticks or whatever, or even pieces of cardboard or foam core board or corrugated plastic in a bag like this and kind of make it into your own little changing tent. Uh, you could, if you get handy and kind of do it yourself, you can kind of figure out how to keep this more open like a tent. But otherwise, I would advise getting either a larger changing bag or spending the extra money, the 90 or so dollars for one of those changing tents would be a lot more convenient for use with these little three drawer file box. Now everybody who does black and white darkroom work has their own favorite kind of developers. But for f using a uh, photo paper like Harman Direct Positive Paper, I found what works well is just your Ilford multi-grade uh, concentrated liquid paper developer. And you can buy this uh, from a variety of places online. I happen to buy a lot of this from Freestyle Photo because their prices are decent and they're in, they're in Southern California, I'm in New Mexico, and they ship it out on I-40, Interstate 40, and it gets to me in a few days, so it's, it's good shipping for me. Um, but places like Freestyle Photo also have a lot of other brands of photochemicals that work just as well. I think Freestyle has their own house brand that's less expensive, uh, so you might want to consider that. Um, also, fixing, um, I like to use... Uh, a non-hardening fixer with fiber-based paper just so that it'll rinse the chemicals out of the paper fibers a little bit better. A uh, hardening fixer is really better for film. Um, this happens to be Codafix, Kodax fixer, but there are a lot of fixers. There's actually uh, non-acidic type fixers also available uh, f online from places like Freestyle Photo or B&H Photo. Uh, but so, so basically a, a fixer that you can mix up in a paper concentrate, a liquid concentrated paper developer that I usually mix up something like 1 to 10 or 1 to 15. And as far as the cost of it, now these two bottles were, were purchased from a few years ago from a local camera supply store in Albuquerque that's no longer in business. And the, the multi-grade developer is about $11 and this big bottle of fixer is about $11 also. So $22 or so uh, gives me a lot of capability here as far as uh, a lot of prints. Um, as far as other darkroom supplies you're going to need, I would advise not investing heavily in custom darkroom equipment if you can get away with it because it's just too, too expensive. Uh, for instance, trays, uh, just go get some Tupperware, plastic cheap Tupperware storage containers. Don't buy expensive photo trays. It just holds liquid. Um, things like, I like these little bottles uh, that are pre-marked with tape uh, for my concentrate. Uh, 150 milliliters of water, another 15 of developer, and there's my 1 to 10 ratio. This I use with my Afghan box camera, but I also have smaller little plastic cups that I buy at the store, and I just mark a piece of tape on it with a 100 milliliter line for use with the, use with the developing drum. Now, measuring volume is going to be important for mixing your chemicals up. Don't go to the trouble of buying custom photographic measuring beakers. Go to the kitchen supply store of your local grocery store and just buy some plastic or glass, but all you need is plastic. Plastic's going to be cheaper. Plastic uh, measuring cups that have, um, uh, have metric, have liters and milliliters. In, uh, measurements, okay? That's all you need. Uh, don't get any, any fancier with it than that. You don't have to spend a lot of money on this. So just use inexpensive kitchen type uh, containers. As far as a uh, temperature uh, control uh, with Harman paper, really you just want it to be about room temperature. 
You don't want it to be too cold. Um, so you don't, it's not as critical as sheet film. Uh, so you don't really need a, a, a film thermometer if you don't have one already. So the chemicals are very inexpensive. The supplies are inexpensive. Getting the processing, you're either a, a tank system, um, developing a uh, tank, um, a uh, rotary base, you can buy them or you can make one um, in a changing bag, a changing tent. Those are your really your, your biggest investments that are going to cost you a little bit of money. But once you've done that, you're set up to make these one-of-a-kind, beautiful, fiber-based, silver gelatin prints. You know, one of the biggest reasons why I'm trying to encourage you guys to get into making these one-of-a-kind direct positive prints is because this is about photography or about photographs as being a physical object. Um, they are a one-of-a-kind physical object uh, instead of them being, if you will, an abstract image that can be appropriated digitally or even in the old film era when a lot of professional commercial photography was done with transparency film, slide film, and then mechanically reproduced in uh, magazines and whatnot. Um, over and over again. In contrast, these are one-of-a-kind black and white prints and they are art objects. An individual object that's unique unto itself. It's physical. It has to be handled physically. It has certain physical characteristics. It's fiber-based paper. It's a wonderful medium to work in. It has certain challenges. It is slow photographically speed-wise um, <clears throat> and it has a limited uh, spectral sensitivity range, a dynamic range, etc. But it can produce wonderful results and very satisfying, very hands-on process. So I'm hoping that this video can enable you guys to see the vision for being able to use this media without having to have a huge outlay of expense. You don't need a whole dark room in your house or apartment. You need a simple tank, changing bag or tent, maybe the three drawer file system, uh, a simple box camera, and uh, just develop it in the daylight or in, the t in a tank or inside the changing bag or tent. And it's a real satisfying, easy thing to do, very hands-on. And so I encourage you guys to get involved in this and see what you can do. Leave me comments, suggestions, ideas uh, down below. And until next time, Happy shooting.